This is the Podcast of Owls, episode number 12, for the week of April 17th, 2018. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Podcast of Owls, your one-stop podcast for RuneScape quests, lore, future updates, and much, much more. I am your host, Krondus, and today I am joined by a mascot. Oh! No, please, God. A Vernick? Vernick, do it. Who? And Walter in the chat. Lives in a pineapple now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this, this is going to be a long recording, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This, this was a little joke we were running before we started recording it's, that we were already tired Krondus out of. It's, it's going to get weird. All right, when guys, we it? we just got through with Game Jam Weekend, so we've got quite we a bit to discuss. We did so much work on, we, game, we jammed so many games, jammed we were so involved so in games, all the games. Jamming, like hell. We weekend did. We did great. nothing. We, we did actually nothing. We deserve pretty <laughs> credit. I pretty much did nothing. I, I went out and saw some friends for a little bit. It was boring. It was quiet. It was nice. But other people did things. Other people yeah. did things. Good job, and... you people. And you know, yeah, we're good good on those people. Those people were not us, though. We're proud of you guys. <laughs> All right. And uh, we also had an update this week, which was the return of Lion Fire making. So we will get to that once we uh, head over to the news in a minute. This world is on fire! Oh, God, I'm going to have to cut everything that. Everything's on fire. All right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is about what's up for the docket today. So let's uh, head on over to the news. All right, Fang, and take it off. In slot number one, the uh, line fire making's back. Um, Woo! That's that's it, really. Uh, you can now make line fires. Um, they're basically trying to encourage you to do line fire making. Um, it's always been faster than bonfires. Like it never was. It never stopped being faster than bonfires. It is just so much more just, inconvenient than bonfires. Exactly. It was so much more inconvenient, um, and thus people never really bothered to do it because while it was faster, bonfires was so incrementally like slightly smaller. Yeah, I don't think it was that big so, of a jump in XP for taking right, the time. Exactly. So what they've done this week is, uh, for one, they took the, the Charge Training Cave minigame, available at, I believe it's 91 fire making? 92. 92 fire making. And um, it is no longer like a daily or weekly D&D. Weekly D&D. Uh, you can just go do it whenever. You get five minute time, you still get XP, you can light fires in the same shapes. But uh, this time you have a chance to get a new item called the Pitch Cam. It has 2,000 charges and is tradable when it's in full or empty. When using it, it speeds up creating your fires, like, significantly. Um, it also speeds up bonfires, but not, like, as fast as creating lines. Uh, additionally, at 70 fire making, you just naturally gain faster fire making. It's not as quick as with the pitch can, and it stacks with the pitch can, but it is, it is pretty nice and fast. Yep. Right. It's very cool. And they, they did remember to add it to the, uh, the skill um, guide. I'm nice. really impressed. Good job, guys. I'm sure Crystal will be very happy about that not yeah. having to. It's, like, it's, not, not it's even the small snarky, things in the world. Not, not even being snarky. It's just like every once in a while an update comes out and they forget to stick something into the skill guide. So mm -hmm. good stuff. Pretty much every Slayer update, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but very cool. Yeah, this is um, like fire making diversification all in one update. Yeah, I mean, I can't say. I, I do That's find fun. myself questioning, like, why this was made, but at the same time, like, I, fine. I like it. It can't sure. have been like a huge job, however. Right, it wasn't huge. I mean, everything made, was like, reused models. So. It's made profitable oh, um, methods of fire making. It's made money sinks for fire making. It's made more yeah. and less AFK methods of fire making. So, yeah. Uh, just to add some humor to this, though, is while they uh, remembered to put the uh, <laughs> faster fire making in there, Char's Cave is not in the skill guide. <laughs> oh, yay! Oh, it's. Yeah, a, I mean, in technicality, it is a D and D. So. It's not really no, it's a training not method. More, but um, just just to speed up, like tell you how quickly this uh ch the pitch can changes things. While you're using the pitch can, your fires are lit instantly. Like you can just spam click this nonsense. Yeah. So it is much faster. It's very very powerful. 
the, the only challenge is finding the right place to do it where you're close enough to a bank where you can spam that quickly. Oh, there's plenty right. of open space in the wilderness. Go right ahead. That's actually where I used to do my Book of Char. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I, I, would get these, I would get these huge lines using um, just by using drop methods and then activate the Book of Char and run back and forth over top of them. I once okay. brought like six or seven clan mates with me, and they all dropped magic logs in a line just to see how many we could pull off with the Book of Char in a row. It was awesome. Jesus. That is such a weird reward. Yeah. It is um, a weird reward yeah. just because like you have to take the time to drop it and then walk over yeah. it. Well, actually, um, there's a really good method because um, you actually only need to do it in a line of like four and then run back and forth. So mm -hmm. you, uh, by summoning four yaks, uh, yep. summoning a yak, okay. filling it, and then dismissing it and repeat, you can actually get a really efficient line just right next to a bank. So that's that's just you know just as good now. Yeah, but this was back in the day before we had like drag out of your inventory to drop, so it was oh, right. Totally, yeah. It was right click intensive as hell. Exactly. But um, uh, as crazy as this sounds, this actually seems pretty nice. Good yeah, job. Nice, nice little update. Yeah. yeah um, it's, additionally, Mod Malia, of things, who but I, like I constantly forget is still at Jagex because <laughs> I'm still waiting for her to make another gnome quest. Wait, who? Um, Mod Malia. Oh yeah. I forget she's at Jagex just because she made Prisoner of Glowfree and then said that she was going to work on the sequel and then... Well, she's on MPX now, right? Yeah, I, I think. I think so. We don't know. I, I don't know what team you're on, Melia. I'm sorry if you're, for some reason, listening to this. <laughs> but um, I just, like, I, I often forget that she's still at Jagex and then just suddenly I see your name pop up. I'm like, oh, yeah, you. Hi. <laughs> So yeah, um, she went in and uh, did some reworking stuff to Firemaker's Curse to make it better. So, yep. thank you. Yep. Uh, and that's that's really everything I got. For, that's uh, that's it for Firemaker. Fire so we do yeah. have some updates uh, for the mining and smithing rework that Jack released yes. today. Got a document today about drop tables. Yes, I really, really like mm -hmm. this. I like what he's doing with this. I agree. Veronica, you want to go over this? Uh, sure. So, much like the document did, I guess we could start with the, the smith items that are being dropped. So, the, the items that have been smithed and items that are resources have been brought into two different categories. And uh, for the smith ones, they've decided, decided to make items called salvage. And these are just high elk and disassembly fodder. Yeah, this is um, the, the elk trash that we kind of right. mentioned in past this is, podcasts this is about the thing this. I've been talking about for a long while. Yeah, just stuff that drops and has the same alk and disassemble value as like actual rune items or rune right. but any, any metal items really right so in order to just the the specifics of it are that there are what seven different tiers of salvage and of yeah, the seven they have tiers there's four different types and the uh tiers affect the uh, alk value and the junk chance and the types affect uh, what components you would get from disassembling. So like mm -hmm. there's uh, plated parts, which give you like the plated components, cover components, that kind of stuff. And they give you and cover plated, plated, deflecting, protective, heavy, strong. Oh yes, you want to go into all of them. There's, there's, there's six sure. of them per. There's but... plated, blunt, spiky, and bladed. Right. And basically um, they're replacements for, um, for whatever's closest. certain weapons, certain armors, certain shields. That's right. right, this is for armors and weapons. Anything smith. Yep. Um, and, and, then, and then the tiers. tiers they go from bronze, bronze to oricalcum. Basically yeah. replacing your bronze to dragon drops. Which, right. okay, so it's bronze to oricalcum right now. It does say later on that they could put... Like, right, but right now it's not there. a concern because... Yeah. Later logical tiers, the chromium, etc. can be added if we find need for them, balancing and filling out drop tables. Yeah. Right, but right now there's nothing better than a dragon item on a drop table, so they don't need them to replace Am I the only basically... one that find it, finds it odd that there's luminite variants? Luminite, um... Where? Oh wait, no, Luminite is in the Dragon Scales. That's, yeah, yeah, it's still weird, it's still weird, but okay. Yeah, but we'll get to that. Um, so this one looks pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just fodder. And yeah. these are not I, stackable. I really like it. Variable. So emphasis on the not stackable in case. Yeah. That I really, really, really like these though, right. and I like that they've left room for future uh, drop improvements. Right. The and the big thing that's nice about that is if they want to give higher gold drops from mobs, they could always just give these instead and make you alk them for right. the gold, which yeah. is always He did give some examples thing. about how they would be replaced. So like if uh, you had a sword, it would be replaced by a bladed salvage. Yep, uh, right. Armor would be plated, to, or 
plated and bladed. Wow, that sounds not at all at all like. And myth like a mace would be a blunt. So it's just logically how a weapon would be. So yeah, yeah. right. And they can drop a couple of these if the item is particularly valuable, or just one if it's like the gloves or something like that. Yeah, I'm just I'm super happy with this because this is basically what what we've been you know talking about and kind of suggesting for a long time. So yeah. I'm really really happy to see this on here. Good yeah, job. I am very happy with Alk Trash. So good job, Alk Trash for the win. Yep, I love Alk Trash. So now we have the the dragon, the dragon scales. scales, right? Yeah. These are for the, the ores and bars, and they're dragon scales, uh, probably mostly because they were thinking about metal dragons first. Yeah, I think this and is the real the issue. Is, they're like, what, what how do we drop? do these? And then they decide on this, and they're like, okay, we'll give this to everything else, and wave hand, lore, these are now currency among monsters who think that gold's trash. I, I really like these, to be honest. Um, I, I, think do. They have, I think they have a couple problems. I don't like that they're tradable. I Wait, are they tradable? You, I mean, they're tra oh yeah, all this they is tradable. Tradable. Oh, I don't like that. It's for drop uh, tables. It's supposed to be to keep money. Now, now here's here's why I don't like. I don't know. I would say that it would be better to force you to mine, and then you can sell the ore that, if you want to. That's exactly what I'm with. Is that I think I, these would be better if they forced you to mine in order to get anything. On them. No, yeah. I think that that means that you're making miners. PVM or something like that. It's yeah, these are the, well, no, you're you're making an yeah. untradable drop that helps you in mining, but, and then if you want to make a profit, you can turn around and sell those ores. But you're you're removing yes. a tradable, profitable drop for that, and the point of these is to not. Yeah, up. but once once you have the mining level required, then you're good to go. Yeah, I, th I, you're not I, losing I think, money in a sense. They're, they're, we're living in a world where you think PVMers don't mine and miners don't PVM. This PVMers like, all have the comp cape. They have 99 mining. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's not like this is going to inconvenience them in any way. Part of it is the economy between the two. and it's a, the, I, I'm not quite... A, like I mean, I'm them. not of the opinion that I think that a monster should have every single one of its drops just be instantly tradable. So yeah, I would I would rather some work would put into it, but I understand but then, why they're trading. But then you're giving PVMers really untradable don't. drops that maybe they don't want. Well, then, well, then they, they don't have to. They then. don't have to you, pick them up. You yeah. can't use that. You can't use the tough to be you argument all the time. Like we're getting. I know, but well, it's that's that's not really a tough to be you that argument. Happens. That's just a we're giving you something that is literally giving you more ore than you would have typically. So I mean, it's giving the exact same amount of ore. It's not like they're gaining extra ore. I off think of this. I think this stuff is literally an tradable. ore replacement. So someone just likes combat can just sell these. It's mm, all right. Like Jack's argument was, if let's hypothetically say sixty percent of the game is PVMers, you, that's you, probably not that far off, honestly. Right, but you're making this update for the forty percent because you recognize that that forty percent needs to be satisfied somehow because yeah. they want this update. But you still can't like. I, totally okay, but here's off. here's my problem with that argument. And this this has been an argument that I've had on several different like topics that vary kind of around like different parts of the game, like quests and skills and bosses and shit. Uh -huh. It's all one game. I don't care what you like the most. It's a business decision, though. Like you don't want to make people quit. Yeah, but, but if you do want to make people. But you do want to make people play. Or drop anymore, then like maybe they deserve it. Then you're just losing players, and that's. I mean, are you are you losing? Range. I mean, are you really losing players because you're making them mine as opposed to just giving them yeah. something? Like to, to I, me, I feel I, like I that's a happy, very like I would be spoiled brat if kind a of player mentality. had to put in some work in order to get this. Yeah, players are just because I I don't like that we're just basically going oh. Remember those uh, those ores you used to get? Here's an item that's literally that ore you used to get, except uh, you get to just sell it to a skiller now. Yeah, right. I, I am not of the opinion that you should pander to someone who only wants to play one part of the game. So I, would, so... I would love it. Honestly, I know this sounds a little nuts, but I really would really appreciate if these were untradeable. I think... Yeah, I think I totally it would... I think it would... Gathering up a huge bunch of these and then going and making some hella bank because you get you know, double ores every time you mine would be really nice. Yeah. I, I, I think totally that makes sense to me. And, uh, maybe maybe it's just me. Changing. Maybe I'm crazy here, but that's, that is... I, I would appreciate if some extra work was put in, because the original pitch was literally like a, 
an enhancer that you took to mine, and those weren't supposed to be tradable. I always thought them was tradable. I never thought mm -hmm. they would be untradable. No, I, I would much, now. much rather this be I just, untradable. I just think if you're going PVMing and you get an item that is supposed to enhance your mining by giving you extra ores, you should have to do the mining. It's just like cutting out a secondary step and making somebody else do it for you. Yeah. And that, that just feels a little odd to me. But that second person should be profiting off of it as well. well the person well, you, that you are should be profiting off of it. You are still Heck, profiting off of it by getting mining. it. Heck, it, it even really gets you two ores per because you have to go do each mining step. I mean, well. hell, I would think this would want to make someone mine more if they I don't mean, like yeah, mining. It, it might. They might just not sell it and use it themselves, but then a miner might I not mean, want yeah, to do definitely. A miner might not want to do PVM, buy a bunch of these off the market, and because they're selling for 80% of what Ford sells for... But, 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 the but it's the same logic. It's the same logic is... Why should we cater to somebody that doesn't want to do every part of the game? Yeah, why? I don't think you should pander those, to someone who only wants to pay to one people that only like part not everyone loves all well, of it. You're right, and that is a problem. Exactly. But we should be encouraging people to go mine. Everybody yeah. to go mine, not just a couple people. Well, like, I'm not a player that enjoys PvP. I don't want to be pushed to go PvP. PvP well, yeah, is an active that, that's thing in the game. Play, it's you can't make, okay, you can't make the argument that that part of the game is not the same as, like, PVM. I mean, I don't is it? PVM. Don't is it? Do PvP. we get PvP content ever? The PvP content that we have, that we're moving. <laughs> I, I think the argument is the same here. I, I don't. But, uh, I, I wholly disagree. I mean, to be one. fair, they, 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 they do add things in the wilderness that are PvP. You know, it's... All right, yeah, so let's, uh, let's move over to the spring cleaner. This should be um, fast. Um, there's a dismantle mode changes. and elf mode. Uh, uh, disassembly mode and elf mode. Uh, dis dismantle mode is still there as well. Yeah, dismantle, it's... Um, but who's going to use it? It all works on... all works on salvage. It all works on... Salvage. So any salvage drop will be affected by the spring cleaner, and either you can dismantle it into, um, so you dismantle, dismantle it into, into bars. Into bars. Okay, bars. In the rare case where a smithable item remains on drop tables, no, dismantle. you do not oh, dismantle wait. into bars. No. Uh, the, oh, no, the salvage saying. you can either alk it automatically or it disassembles it automatically. You yeah, can no wait, longer wait. get ores and bars from spring cleaner. Well, good. Yes, okay. yes, dismantle that is that is the good thing about that. Dismantle doesn't work in salvage. Okay. okay yes. Good. I read that too. Okay. Okay. I also misread that. Okay, so alk mode yeah. works on salvage and it alks it. Doesn't require runes, but it requires charges, which are charged by springs, which you can make the invention. Yeah, the and rare the case thing that he was saying was that uh, he might not want yeah, to remove can... like uh, arrows and bolts from some drop Air tables. Arrow battle saves. Let's say. Yeah. Well, those, no, those will still be. Well, no, those will still be the same. This is not specifically. Is, like, this is specifically sort of metal stuff. items. Oh, yeah. oh, you're you're talking yeah. specific metal. Yeah, items. yeah, okay, the, yeah This sense. is the rare case that he says in the dismantle mode was that he in the rare case that he doesn't remove like arrows and bolts, right? That dismantle mode mm -hmm. isn't going to work on that, and you're still not going to get ores and bars from them. So, or like a bullseye lantern. Yeah. yeah. Dumb like that. Um, and then disassembly mode is the same thing as the out mode, but it disassembles it. Yeah. I don't. I don't um, wait, really... but does it cost any charges? Yeah, it's that's... just free disassembling. Now that's weird. Uh, I'm okay. I mean, it's it. it's fantastic, but I'm just kind of I mean, confused why. You make the spring thing with invention now, so I don't see why not. Okay, okay that is a good point. Okay, yeah, yeah no, no you're, it's an invention yeah. item. I keep forgetting that. I, I also. So, yeah, yeah, that's fine then. Yeah, yeah. You make this and then you disassemble awesome. only salvage. Yeah, I mean, all the other fine. drops still pick up. That's fine. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And Savage was not made stackable purely so that the Spring Cleaner, these things would be more useful, so. Great. Yeah, now Sweet. that Spring Cleaner is not a Treasure Hunter item, I'm all on board for those changes. Yeah, I honestly completely forgot that it was made for Invention now, so. Yeah, I was, I was thinking it was just Springs that were there for some reason. So I think besides the tradable thing, uh, we're pretty much very on board with this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I can understand why they've made it tradable, I just don't agree with it. Personally. Oh, I mean, I understand it to an extent. I just don't like it. So, you know. Also, I'd, I'd like to point out that um, the, the words Luminite and Dragons showed up, so... Yeah, that... Okay, I've got an issue with this. Like... You do... No, I love this. I like. I want, like, a, a set of catalytic... Yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay, but cool with here's, that. here's the problem with that, is, like, that's the same thing as saying a cold dragon. Yes. Which I'm is honest. also totally reasonable. Uh, it's, it's just a dragon that's on fire all the time. <laughs> 
You are it's not on fire, fire, Ricky Bobby. Oh Jesus! It's a black dragon on fire. I'm not Sounds seeing. I'm I mean, I mean, if they the wanted to make a coal dragon, like whatever. It's just yeah, like, I, don't, I, I don't this is the first that. time we've ever even had like a hint at a secondary ore dragon. So it's like well, it's because the only secondary ore has been coal. Well, yeah, but I mean, at this point, why would when we not have weird, heard of a coal dragon? So when it was why weird, would it why would weird. they bother hinting at it when originally they weren't planning to? But now that we have a series of like, now secondaries, we have a bunch they actually do it. Because now we're gonna yeah. have to have an animanimica dragon. Uh, That's a white weird... animanimica and a dark animanimica too. Uh, yeah, I imagine you make like some mechanics that do it with the two of them. An anemone yeah. dragon. And also, any dragon after rune has to be like mechanically heavy. I want these to be very mechanically heavy slayer mobs. I'm totally cool with that. I I think it's it's great and it just expands the room for future dragons. I agree. I'm not saying it's bad. I just found it like I looked at it and I was like, "That's uh, that's kind of weird." But okay. I mean, you don't call it a coal dragon. You call it like a fire dragon or something. You call it a coal dragon. Yeah, I think you know? would just call it a coal dragon at that you point. You have a fire. You call it fire. You would dragon. call literally Drops every on... other metal at, I guess, and dragon. And a lore book that says this was made by, with coal. It's made of coal. <laughs> it's made of yeah. coal, but it is literally fire. made of coal. Fire dragon. Yeah. Like you don't call a celestial dragon a time dragon. Was it? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you know. to be fair, it does say whether these skills were created individually by the dragonkin or some other experimenter, or whether the corresponding dragons simply haven't been found yet is unknown. So if they decide to never do secondary dragons, they can always just say, "Well, yeah, it was made by the dragonkin." I'm I'm cool with that. I mean, that yeah, felt like yeah. they were giving room of we can do more if we want to. So yeah. which which is great. There's I mean, it's always uh, nice yeah, when I mean, they leave fine. room for future potential. I love rune dragons as a slayer mob. I'd want to see more build up. I, I hope we get our rune dragons as like a boss or like boss like trash that. mobs are fine sometimes, but the rune dragon mechanics are pretty great. Yeah. Also, I I am a big fan of the uh, the gemstone dragons. To be honest, they're nice. I mean, they're not as mechanically interesting as the they're. They're incredibly have. boring mechanically, but like, like I don't have a problem with them. Everything I think post fun. ninety nine has the same set of like one mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Rune dragons feel very intense. And I They're more it. like Blake or the. It like, is slightly Batman. disappointing how adamant dragons came out, but I wish yeah. they'd oh, well. give those a bit more okay. love. Anyway, we on the Ori Calcum dragons, I guess. <laughs> so All right, uh, uh, I guess we should mention, uh, as of a couple weeks ago, because we never we oh. haven't mentioned this on the podcast before. Um, Mod Stu was moved over to the mining and smithing team. So. Yay. Yes, a new mod has been hired to go on the growth team in his place. Yep. Yay. Well, has it? Yeah. Yep. He, he said whoever they hired. decide to hire. Uh, I hired. It didn't know, sound like they had actually hired someone, but okay. Well, that's the, the slots have been filled from my understanding. Okay. Trust me, I have insider information. Oh, 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 do you? They, okay. they chose not to hire him because they had to <laughs> else. I didn't expect to be hired. Did anyway, you actually get your resume back from that? They said they hired someone else. Oh. There you go, insider info. Insider info. Right here from a verdict. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, I think and, then, that's... and then also worth noting, um, Jagex, uh, at, not Jagex, Mod Deg is leaving. Oh yeah, Deg's um, leaving. He's not leaving Jagex. He's not leaving Jagex. Jagex. He's going to the un unannounced MMO. Yes. He's going to work that, with um, Molly. Yeah. Which oh, also his, his game jam project is hilarious. So. What is it? Is the it's finale finishing, Deg quest finishing Deg quest? <laughs> wow. He made a huge thing. Of, well, first of all, he made a way to skip the Telos bit. Good. And then he made a um, a dollhouse item, which you can get at the end, which then has five creepy dolls that you can get with it, which are each their own step, and they're all incredibly obscure with past content he's done. One of them is dressed as as an Azra. Oh Ooh, my I god! Saw that. I'm so excited. It's gonna be from Children of Ma. You just like know. Oh, that. it's gonna have to. That's the only. <laughs> Majora quest he's done. So. I'm hoping it, it's I mean, like I hope I'm hoping you have to do something hyper uh, specific yeah. while lava surfing. It's hilarious. No, please don't make me lava surf I, again. I really, I please, gonna be. please I, don't make I'm me lava you surf now, again. It's going to be. The thing is, it's game jam, so some other mod has to pick this up to finish I implementing know. it. That's, that's smart. <laughs> or he can like work on it during tap time because I'm sure unannounced MMO wouldn't stop you from doing some tap. Maybe, projects. but it's I mean, maybe if they force you to do tap on the unannounced MMO. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I haven't seen Ollie been doing much tap time. 
Well, yeah, because he's on the unannounced MMO, and if he's doing tap, it's probably on the MMO. That's, what, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, yeah, is that they probably won't let you cross games like that. This is off oh. track. Anyway. I, I, I think this is all the news, though, unless we had anything I just, um, I just I, Yeah, probably. I was going to say, Dag has like, the, the trolliest personality, and it's a joy to watch him on stream and in videos. Um, so, so but, uh, a couple other things to mention, though. And I would bundle this into news. Um, our, our next bullet point was supposed to be talking about an upcoming update, but I think we should briefly discuss all three of them as part of the price change and summer content news post. Okay. Okay. So uh, Jagex comes to wait, wait, is this last week. You going to start with the first one? I think the first one's the, the best one we should No, about. no, I'm going to go in reverse order here. Awesome. So Jagex started a bit of a tiz uh, last week by announcing that they are raising prices for new players. By one whole dollar. By a whole dollar. Um... <laughs> Players inevitably lost I their shit. I don't know why. This is already a super um, cheap game. I mean, I understand the complaints because we just got a super shit year of content. Okay, yeah, yeah, but that's, it's $1. It's it, not $10. I think $1. the main problem that a lot of people had that I um, saw is that we had a Jack super shit burn. year and a year yeah. full of MTX bullshit. Yes. So, and I, I'm okay. totally in agreement with their complaints. I, yes, can see that, I agree with that if, complaint. If they, if they had just finished off a perfect year... And then we're like, hey, guys, we've been working really hard. We need to bump our membership prices up in order to sustain this kind of content. I'd be like, fuck yeah, do it, go. The thing but is, we I just got probably the worst year of content yes. we've had in ever. We had an awful 2017, but we just had an amazing start to 2018. And the promises, especially in this news post, are equally amazing. It's a great sign. But a lot of people felt like they did not I think, earn I think they're still So I totally, I totally understand the complaints. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand the complaint from it. that point of view. Is yeah, last right. year was awful, and you're going to do this now? Yeah. But Jack also released a news yeah. post that was basically like, hey, guys, so we got some cool stuff coming this summer. Look forward to it. This is why we're raising prices. And I'm like, okay. Like, it satisfied me in a way because... So far, they've lived up to the promises they've made this year. Right, this year. And if they can continue to live up to them, I will be satisfied and happy with the price rates. I'll right. just I snicker, mean, in, I'll just snicker in the corner with my $5 rates. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I mean, I've got I'm, the same. But <laughs> I'm paying with in-game cash, so it's not affecting me. Yeah, I've, I've been bonding it the past... I mean, past a year of membership is only like 400 mil. Yeah, it's, it's just 400. But um, basically... Uh, a lot of the complaints were like, you haven't earned it, and they don't expect them to be able to live up to these promises. On the other hand, I actually do, because I, I feel like it, yeah. these last few months have really shown that Jagex is getting their shit together. Right. Like, quite frankly. <laughs> um, so they, they basically told us about four updates. Um, the first is Master Skill Kit Perks and Improving 99 Skill Perks oh. from Maze and Moderator. Boy. Thank God. Thank God. Really, they Clearly, they're, they're missing the point of the, the polls, um, and they really, I, I personally think they need to pull this because so many comments I saw in the is aftermath that, of the annual survey was, no, I, I really only voted for that one to improve perks, not because I wanted Master Skill Yeah, because, because the, I, because I the existing yeah. perks suck ass. Now, what I appreciate is that in this little blurb, they said, we'll be pulling you soon on whether you only want perks on current 120 skills. I'm okay with that. Yes. And Give I, us perks on I will skills totally on that, that go to 120. Yes. I will be you fine me, with that. If you give me perks with Please. Slayer, Invention, and Dungeoneering, especially perfect, great. Especially I know those skills where their perk is just you can teleport everywhere now. Yeah. I want yeah. actual now, perks. Now, if you're, if you're giving me perks on skills that do not currently go to 120, that effectively turns the skill into a 120 skill, and I will not support that. I yeah, think no. I think we'll pretty easily get it to be that. Yeah, I I would be stunned right. if the poll results said, right. "Hey, we want it in every skill." But I mean, especially at a seventy-five percent threshold. Yeah, just because I would be really surprised if the majority of the player base is cool with every skill being treated as one twenty as a cap. I, I think that most players, based on just how Slayer was received as bumping up to one twenty care about their being content the whole way. Well, I think Slayer was received the way it was because of how poorly 120 was implemented. Well, that, that's but, what I yeah. mean, is like players want to see content the whole way. So going, oh, hey, um, there's a even better perk at 120 fishing now. Have fun there's with no that 100 million experience. Yeah. yeah, there's no content from 99 to 120, so I feel like players wouldn't be interested in that. I know I personally would not be interested in that, even as somebody who's 
actively working on 120 fishing. Yeah, I have a couple. I have 120 wood cutting. Are you actively now. working on 120 fishing? Or are you just trying to get bubbles? I want yeah. bubbles, but I plan to finish off 120. Good boy. I'm I'm 40 mil away from it, so like I might as well at this point. Yeah. But yeah, I don't want to see it on skill cave or master skill caves that are not for a I, 120. I'm totally skill. cool with it for a skill that is required for the comp cave. Yes. Great. Yes. Uh, next up is Solak. It's coming in May. Okay. Awesome. I need to say something about Solak because I see these comments everywhere about how Solak has been pushed back five times. It's been pushed back maybe once, but because twice. everyone it's been pushed always, back twice. When's the first time? January and April were the two pushbacks. But because people keep getting it in their mind, it's got to be next month, and then it's not next month. Like, oh, they pushed it back again. I mean, but did they again, ever actually say it month. was going to be January though? No, I, I, I didn't expect it until March. Like, yeah, I didn't expect it until around January. March or April. But I can't, like, people are, like, overdoing it with and the... The last getting... thing I'm going to complain about is content being pushed out if it means we're getting quality content. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, I mean, as long as you have a good reason and the end product is fucking awesome... We'll see how awesome it is. Yeah, I, mean, I, I totally expect... Uh, select to be a very well developed boss as much as it's had and death well time. So, yeah. yeah, I'm just excited to see what what comes out of it. It looks really okay. cool, Great. and uh, yeah, cool. That hype might not last too long with the update coming out the month after, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, next up is another one we've already talked about: the player owned farm. Yep. Uh, uh, so nothing really new here. Uh, to go along with that, uh, we got a couple pieces of concept art. Additionally, um, we skipped over this earlier, but there was a competition for a uh, a new, new farming animal, and mm -hmm. some mushroom men won. Adorable concept art. Uh, eager to see those in game. Needs yep. to be an expansion from the uh, Zygomites. We, um, we did we did learn a little bit more about where their designs are looking for for the player on farm. Reward. It says most of your time will be spent nurturing the livestock. You will choose animals to place in your pens, help them grow, breed them to create better beasts. Check them for XP, sell them at market, or retire them and bring in something bigger and better. Animals will be tradable, and if you get a hold of certain breeds, you'll gain access to global buffs for your farming runs and other related skills. Looks cool. Yeah. Something I've seen really reinforced in the Discord for this is um, they want consumable rewards. Yep. They want consumable rewards that tie into other skills that aren't combat. Right. I, I, I pitched a couple ideas myself that they seem very interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what was it? I, I pitched one that was helpful for um, uh, rune span. I called it, uh, what did I call it? Like a, a rune, rune s pheromone or something like that, but basically <laughs> an item that you can place uh, attached to an s wraith or one of the s creatures uh -huh. and it encourages more nodes of that type to spawn. Oh, that's cool. Um, and Raven seemed interested in that, so we'll see. Clearly what I, I we need is s no. Ha 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 ha! I was back to the freezer joke. <laughs> That's how much I laughed during the quest too. Uh, yeah, I know. That was but, how much I laughed during the quest. Uh, I, I, I think the best reward we could get from this would be a cow onesie. But moving on. <laughs> oh jeez. I, I would like that. That would be great. Um, and finally, the uh, the hype one, Avernic. The hype say one. Say it. Say the meme. Oh. Amanishi Temple Interior. I'm not wrong. There we go. Thank you. Ah, uh, you're probably right. right. Um, we are getting something <laughs> called Elite Dungeons. We are to get uh, two to three of them, depending on the reception. This year. If they received well, we get three. All three will be this year. June, June July, July, September. September. The oh, first okay. one September is, is if the other two are well received. Correct. So, right. So the like extra month. Um, the extra month so, Which on it. is crazy. Like, they're developing like this, these like nothing. This, this yeah. is flashbacks to the Void Quest series right now. <laughs> Yeah, the, because since the entire beginning yeah. of the year, first half of the year has been spent on systems, yeah. and all they have to do is plug in graphics and mechanics. So and might I just I'm say about Amanishi Temple how much I love the picture of Siryu? Oh, oh my god, they're so... so the the concept art is gorgeous. The, 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 interior, like the actual pictures we're getting are gorgeous. Yeah. These look so great. Can we just... Why, did, why is Siryu locked up? Like, does anyone else find that that's, really weird? That's cool. Well, that's Did clearly you, a big part of the story. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a story, but, like, that interests the hell them? out of me. Do I'm, what? I'm fascinated. Do you think you can save them? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, but uh, the three of these dungeons are supposed to be narratively connected. 
there's going yeah. to be a um, a story. I don't know how to they're going to be narratively with, connected given the second one. Artists. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, so um, so they are basically um, small group to soloable raid experiences. One one to three players. One to three players, and they are narrative based, and they have a collection of bosses and mobs and unique drops among them and shared drops among them. And there's giant also P a story mode, which is it's basically kind of a giant PDF fest, but it's narrative based. So there's a story mode, which brings yeah. it down to like a quest difficulty. So they most people also, can do this. They also give dungeoneering XP and, and tokens. Dungeoneering training as well. Yeah. Uh, you are also going to be you are hearing those temples. Yep. Oh. Uh, the, there are three bosses in uh, yes. the the uh, emanation temple: temple the Sanctum Guardian, Masuda the Ascended, and Siryu parentheses kinda. So I'm assuming we're going to be defending Siri. I assume Siri is either Syria. going to be defended or yeah. he's corrupted in some way. Yeah, and then something and else pops up. There. I am so so excited that we're finally going to see Siri. I literally suggested back when Emanishi Temple come out, came out that we would see Siri inside that temple. Oh, I mean, we kind of knew they were going to do something we, with the temple eventually. We, we all knew it, but like, it's so great that okay. they actually are. Something quick about Seryu is in this blog, it calls um, Home to the Guardian Beast Seryu, and, and just this weekend, Osborne used the same term, Guardian Beast, for Virago Quest. Well, so, we know Seryu is kind of like the, the Yakamaru Seryu, of right. Dillinar. Yeah, I was going to say, Seryu reminds me of the Anima Guardians. Right, so I always think uh, Seryu's uh, always been a guardian. With Zenacto, with Yakamaru, etc. Right. But he liked that. He's with the terminology to liking it more to like the Telos, the Solak, the. I'm okay Virago. with that though. I really. I have. mean, I this can. Is the I mean, of if she, if she, he, she, whatever is actually like yeah. a spawn yeah. of the anima, then she, like I'm fine with that. It's like terminology. Yeah. yeah, it looks but, um, different from the other three. I, I would also add that it is called one of the four guardians of the Wushenko Isle. Right. Also that. So and maybe we, there's. We know who all that's... four of them are. We as do. Well. We? We don't know their names, but there's like the Great Stone Turtle, and there's there's two others. Yeah, you, you can see them. Is, wait, 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 wait. Is there actually is there a Great Stone Turtle? Yeah. That's so one this of is the so this is definitely just a direct reference with Zanocto then. Yeah. No, okay. It totally so yeah. Is. Yeah. Um, because these these are all things that are mentioned specifically in um, ports Port. missions. Yeah. And I mean, um, and, and the four I'm of these are all. Trying like, to remember the other. Th other they're all wait. ripping off of like actual Chinese mythology. Yeah, like, no, actually, absolutely. Like, yeah. I don't know if the Azure Dragon would fit in there. He is the Azure Dragon. What? No, Siri is not the Azure Dragon. Yes, he yes. is. Yeah. Go uh, examine the, the port the portal. That is this Azure Dragon. Yeah, portal. it's it's Siri. It says he Seryu. is the Azure Dragon. Siri is based on. The Azure Dragon, one of a group of four creatures representing the right. seasons in Chinese mythology. Oh yeah, that's what I should have looked up. What, okay. are, what are the four? <laughs> uh, the Black Tortoise, the White Tiger, the Vermilion Bird, and the Azure Dragon. That's what yep. the four are. Okay. It's just straight doing that. All right. Well, that's fine. That's that's old lore anyway. But these ex these they're called. I was expecting an actual Azure uh, Genbu, Dragon. Genbu, that's his name. <laughs> Genbu. They call these elite dungeons, which weird name and also there's talk about making like mid-level ones which are you really going to call that elite but not okay. elite dungeons <laughs> and, and the only difference between these and raids is purely group size it's it's three instead of ten yeah one to three instead of ten. the difference between these and raids is group size and there's actual story and we're well, getting too i mean we, have, I, I'm be we do have actual story we do in, and, we're in getting, raids. and we're getting this in complete thing all at once with sequels planned and in development. So do we want to talk about the second one? Yes, the picture. So the it is more than likely something to do with Kessie. So. And it, it dragon... looks like Kessie. Like the so, art looks like Kessie. The, the building style looks like right. Kessie. Yeah, specifically the buildings. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lava. It's a, a cave with uh, no walls. As Everyone's to, uh, first guess was Mount Firewake, but yeah. Orion has said but, that it's um, not Mount Firewake specifically. We got a Carapac answer. Um, Additional note is that um, the the concept art piece that we have, where the character is standing, is literally like right at the very beginning of the room. Right. Yes. Um, but an additional note is uh, what looks like the portal in is a staircase. blue is a blue swirl of some sort. I imagine I it it's a staircase. staircase. Yeah. But I can't quite tell. 
I, so sure. I can't tell if it's a portal or a staircase. It's the Azure Dragon it? portal. Oh! I was that almost, works. I was almost joking. Like, what if this is below the Wushenko Isles? Maybe, but weird. no, no. He said that this one's not in the Wushenko. I, I, I know. But yeah, um, this this concept art here is uh, there's a couple things you can find on. It's like big dragons here is one of the things, and then it says a uh, wheel powering the lab rooms is another one. And it's a giant cave of lava. So I'm thinking like dragons in labs is like a dragon in lab. Yeah, this so this like definitely dragons. screams Ketsy dragon. And it also lab. has three locations marked, I assume, for bosses. So another three bosses the month after the first one, which is the month after Solac. So many bosses. Yeah. Yep. And I'm so excited. This is what I want to do forever. I'm really excited to <laughs> see how these play out. Um, if I we could never get another really boss and just have these from now on. Fuck oh, that'd be perfect. Fuck it, do I'm it. I'm totally happy with that. They look, they look super cool, and I'm really eager to see what they're Yeah, doing. I yep, really, really We're really definitely like going to do it when this comes out. Yeah. And I'm, and we're going to record it. It's going to be awful. I, I it's probably... Be, no. <laughs> wow, well, you, thanks. Uh, we already pre-decided that it's going to be a, a Vernick, me, and Walter, right? <laughs> yeah, because uh, doesn't want to log on when, for it. When I first heard about this, I was kind of like, oh, God, more bosses. But I Alex, really, over I really like the direction of like the story content with it. So, Re I, realistically, it should be Crandis, me, and Avernix, since we, all three of us talk. But probably we'll, we'll but see what for, for recording purposes. Yeah, around. yeah, for recording but, purposes. Yeah. I but I, I fully expect this to make kind of updated the year considerations. It looks super cool, so I'm I'm really excited to see what comes out of it. Yeah, uh, let's move yeah. on to the topic. Game Jam 2018. Uh, uh, we, we got a lot of a lot of different uh, projects here with Game Jam 2018. Yeah, do you want we to got, the uh, ones that are uh, I'm just going to go through like what each of them were doing first. Okay. Okay. So okay. we got um, Mod Shogun making new achievements. Osborne and Raven uh, developing quest ideas. Writing quests. Mod Tomb. Yeah, writing quest ideas. Uh, Mod Tomb creating cooking guild uh, expansions and mini quests. Uh, Timbo and Mod uh, Erator are making um, alchemical uh, onyx jewelry. Shawnee is being the greatest person ever and making clan improvements. Uh, Pi and Harrison are doing combat improvements and removing Bounty Hunter. Uh, Mod Mark is doing social and shop updates. Uh, Mod Mohawk just did a bunch of quality of life updates. Thank you. Good job. Um, Krista is doing skill guide reworks. Kelpie is making Garden of Tranquility 2, the Varaka Ring. Uh, Iago and Edge are doing the Skilling Varaka Dungeons. Ring. Oh my God. That's the title of the <laughs> channel. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and uh, Mod Ryan is doing Player Owned House Contracts. So uh, let's, let's go down the list. Oh, we're going to do it that way. Okay. Yeah, it's probably easier. Just go in Discord order. Yep. All right, Shogun Achievements. Shogun. Uh, making a lot of thing, achievements? Yay! First thing is, he didn't make an achievement to start with. He made a Ripper Demon pet. Oh, yeah, yeah, he made a Ripper Demon pet. Just to, like, like Eddie from Edamuse, there's no threshold. It is purely cosmetic and just for fun. Yeah, it drops like, more from uh, from Elite Ones, which is great. Right. The chance is, like, hugely better, and you also get three rolls at it. On uh, I think Osborne wrote the dialogue, and it's pretty funny. Yeah, but I don't expect to get this. Yeah. It's going to be super rare. I, I mean, I, like, I, I fully expect to get this, because... I still need to grind my rippers for. I need, uh, I need half the journey for Master Quest Cape. Yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna wait until this is out. I uh, also have to grind rippers. Get, so yeah, okay. that seems like a good idea. They are the only elite mob I have the soul of, sadly. Yeah, but the uh, the dialogue's pretty funny. Nice job. Uh, pets are the greatest place to put silly dialogue, so I love it. Yes. Um, and then uh, Shogun made a bunch of really nice achievements. Uh -huh. um, things like all the Nomad Soul Capes, visit all the Benedict Yak locations, right. um, resource dungeons. There. He had a bunch of stuff for ports. He added achievements for uh, Gobi Rep and Gilbert, or God Wars Dungeon 2. Rep. And there's a bunch of fun ones, too. Yep. Just like banana pizzas and um, other things of the type. Weird things. Weird things. Don't eat banana pizza, please. Yeah. But I, I really like the... Uh, all the achievements I've seen from them. Yeah, so achievement system's awesome. So just more of those are cool. Thank you. All right. Um, 
Osborne, Osborne and Ravens, Ravens quest. quest. All right, uh, Fang, I think you have a rant to get off, so let's <laughs> just start with, with that. Let's just start with that. that. Yeah, because I think we can talk about the other one in a more uh, in-depth and interesting way. Oh, there's right. the one in the middle. There's the one in the middle. Yeah. Go. Um, okay, so uh, Mirwani Wildcat Quest. A Breath of the Wildcat. Wildcat. All by its name. Everybody really likes that name, but I kind of hate it. I <laughs> I like it just because I love Breath of the Wild, so Breath of the Wildcat make, pun, makes me happy. Like, it's a funny pun, but like... The quest has nothing I mean, to I mean, do with yeah, I mean, selling their sticky bread. I mean, in context, it makes no sense, but I just love yeah. the name because I'm biased to tell. So. But it's funny, but I... Yeah. Mm. You have to realize, Osborne is the king of bad jokes. I know. That's what I figured out this weekend. That's why I thought it should have been Walk on the Wild Side. Or just Walk on the Wild Cat. I don't care. Born to it be had Wild? To be a bad joke. Come on. Born to be Wild Cat. Like, there's, there's options. Anyway, um... This quest has a fuck ton of problems. <laughs> is it a quest? Is it not a quest? We don't oh. oh man! I, I'm gonna sound really high and mighty during this whole thing, so I apologize in advance. Don't we always? I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, but oh, man. okay. So this was pitched not really as a quest, but as a piece of content that requires level 99 hunter in order to do. The basic pitch is that you are sent to an island where where Ronnie Wildcats still live. And you need to survive and catch catch and trap one in order to become like a hunter tutor master god guy. In the process, you interact with the unknown Karamjan god, and then uh, catch yourself a wildcat and make yourself a fancier hunter cape with an improved perk and move on with your life. Oh god, oh boy. is this a bad pitch? Um, the gameplay that Osborne pitched, I might add, is fucking awesome. I would love to play that. Mm -hmm. But as like a quest concept, I think this is so riddled with holes and it really hurts. So thing number one, the whole point of this quest is to catch and kill a Raharni wildcat, which in the lore is an extremely endangered species. Why? Are we killing them? Did you watch the second live stream? No. Oh, you're informed. He had he, he went on for like five minutes about this. Oh. What did he say? He, he established that there is a culture among the wildcats um, where the chieftain of them will fight hunters that come to the island, and once he is not able to defeat the hunter and the hunter defeats them, they're no longer fit to be chief. They're sentient? Except in his pitch, he even said that afterwards... Afterwards, there's a uh, training method to catch the wildcats. <laughs> okay, that doesn't work. Yeah. No! Like on the stream, he did the whole chieftain thing. Additionally, I hate the chieftain thing. Yeah, I really that, hate that the That sounds chieftain really thing. weird. That not only are we capturing and killing sentient creatures, but we're making capes out of them. Uh, there's just... Uh, it it, it uh, hurts the concept of the skill capes being from the wildcat in the first place. Um, and then just to make matters worse is um, he added a thing about Karamjan God in there, and I, I want Karamjan God lore. I really, really do. I really but do, but it needs to come from... Please him into content like this. It needs to come this from the... Jungle Treasure. It needs to come from anything that, that makes sense for it. So my problem with this is that you survive a couple nights, and then you find spirit tracks, and then you go talk to a wild cat that's being possessed by the Karamjan God, who tells you that they used to be the mounts of the Karamjan gods, and, like, that's that's cool. So why did the Karamjan god not talk to all of the hundreds of hunters that were out there hunting this race into extinction and stopping them? Yeah, Walter's, Walter's not happy about the fact that they actively promote WWF, but... Yeah, Walter really likes yeah. WWF. No, don't, like, I totally, I totally agree with that, too, is they actively support WWF, and then you're killing an endangered animal for fashion. And this is well, and this is World yeah. Wildlife Foundation, by the way, not old wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> as funny as that would be. Um, That's actually why other... that name changed. Piece of trivia. Yeah, actually. Um, just just to further add to my annoyance here, um, he he kind of ignores all of the uh, and like no no hatred towards Osborne here. Obviously, that chat was busy as shit, so I can totally get him missing things, but. There was so much discussion about turning the quest from um, a hunt and kill them to a conserve them because good hunters are involved in conservation efforts. A hunter hunts not to just like murder a bunch of things because they can, 
but because they're out there trying to preserve the environment and protect species. And, you know, making this quest about you're initially set to find the Rohani wildcats, discover how, you know, uh, endangered they are, and make conservation efforts, proving yourself to the, the hunter tutor that you really do understand the goal of the skill, would be awesome. So I was really disappointed to see that that was another route that wasn't taken. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, yeah. into, are we getting to, in, are we getting into my rant territory? Not quite. Okay. Furthermore, let me know. Throw some, some, some shade at some people who replied to me on Reddit when I brought up some of these concerns. Um, I was like low key annoyed to see all these people. Like it's gotta be ninety nine hunter. There's no way this can't be ninety nine hunter. How many people with level 99 Hunter canonically are there in the game? Like, non-players right now? Just asking. Very few, and they're all the Hunter Tutors. So tell me, why would the point of this quest be to hunt this thing, and you have to have 99 Hunter to hunt them, when these things were so widely hunted that they're endangered? How many, how many NPCs are there out there with 99 Hunter that could have hunted these beforehand, then? That'd be a lot. Additionally, I really don't understand another thing why 99 Hunter is required for this quest when we have so many quests that offer rewards for things you have not yet achieved. Fucking Pieces of Hate just did this with the Skeletal Order. And I'm not even mad about it. Like, it's a common thing that quests do. Yeah. So it's absolutely ridiculous to me that 99 Hunter should be required for this quest, and I'm saying this is somebody with 101 Hunter, so it's not like this requirement will gate me at all, and the 99 Hunter pitch was not to make it at quest points, Kron just go into this later. Um, I just, I, I think that this quest suffers in terms of scope and access by forcing itself to be 99 Hunter, and then just further causing problems for me. Why isn't 99 crafting required for this quest? Because it's not like you can craft things with your hunter skill last I checked. So I don't know. I just, I, I think this is coming at the idea of skill cape quests from the totally wrong direction. And I think going back to that idea they had a couple years back of skill focus quests and applying it to this would be a much stronger way of making a good quest with cool lore and fun, like, survival content without shoehorning this into an awkward zero quest point quest that requires 99 Hunter to improve your skill pick look and perk and doesn't have anything to do with the quest cape. Like, why are you making this a quest then? It's a tale at that point. Yeah. Structurally um, a tale. And just, I, I think that it's being approached from the wrong angle. And then the final other uh, a little awkward quibble I had, and this was more response to somebody from Reddit, they're like, well, it has to be 99 Hunter. You're getting the thing to make the skill cape. Except in the lore, every skill cape is made from that. So is every sk single skill cape quest going to be, hey, go find a way to get some Raharni Wildcat fur using this skill? Because I, for one, cannot wait to use my cooking skills to get some fur. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that a lot. Like, Roast it over the fire alive. Yeah. Like, I cannot wait to use the power of my dungeoneering skill to somehow strip the fur from a Raharni Wildcat. Or Fletch or a Harney Wildcat. Or, of course, Prayer over a Harney Wildcat. Just just pray the skin away. It's fine. <laughs> so, like, I, I just, I feel like this is being approached from the wrong angle. Making a skill-focused quest gives you a stronger core goal for a, a quest as a whole. Because it also expands the access raises skill recs required for the quest point, which is always a net positive in my personal mind. I know not everybody agrees with this, but as a player, when I was not max, I was always all about skills raising skill recs because it meant I had a good reason to go train myself. But not to yeah, 99. I was the same way. But not to 99. At least not this, not well, this quickly. Well, see, that's, I, the, I that's the thing that I said. It's super gimmicky. Well, that's the thing I said in, yeah, I think, the last wrong. podcast was, it I'm someone really who has does. always advocated for a 90 rack. Yeah. I just don't want to jump from 86 to 99 this quickly. 85. Exactly. Um, 85 is the highest skill rank we have. Whatever. Yep. Yes. Also, if and Hunter is not one of those 85s. Yeah. If you make it a skill-focused quest, and you make 
the the standard that you from these skill focus quests you get a better perk you can then go back to the skill focus quest you already have and they're done you just the fire maker's curse and uh deadly cash okay. in the process i would be totally fine with them raising the skill requirements for those two i would it's not like deadly uh, catch is really required for much i don't think you can actually raise those like cleanly mm, i don't know then there's people um, but in like, and, yeah. it, you know, anyway. it, it gives you it gives you some room and some precedent, and I think access is always such a big concern for Jagex when it comes to quest requirements. But I think it's super strange that suddenly they're like, yeah, ninety nine, woo. So I don't, I don't know. I just I feel like this quest is really being approached from the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I really do. I mean, and um, uh, I would I would really love to see feedback actually addressed and brought on board on this and and maybe just take some time to improve a lot of the core problems that we've presented here because i i feel nitpicky but like at the same time deservedly so you entitled prick what a bastard <laughs> so like I'm, I'm sorry if i'm coming across as kind of high and mighty and like i must get my way on this one but I feel very passionate about this, this skill focus, skill cape thing idea, especially when it's such an interesting, obscure piece of lore like the Rahani Wildcats and the Karamjin God. Uh, another pitch I had was, why don't you have an actual temple to the Karamjin God hidden on the island that you can't discover until you've managed to set yourself up enough survival-wise to make your way over there? Oh, it's a cigarette. Mm. <clears throat> cigarette, yes. But uh, I don't know. I just... I, I kind of... I just I hated a large portion of how the plot needed to progress in this quest, especially when it came to the, the killing rather than the conserving. So, yeah, that is my rant on um, Stinky Breath, the quest. All right, well, now it's time for my rant of quest points and cape. Hmm. All right. So for those who are uninformed about this topic, there are two options that Osborne is currently thinking about this quest, quote unquote. That one, it will not be a quest, and it will be a tale, story, content thing, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Second option, it is a quest that gives zero quest points, and thus is not required for the quest cape. Why would you call that, it a quest? That is the biggest pile of crap I have ever heard in my life. If you're gonna go and put it on the quest list, quest list, and say, nah, you, you don't need that for for the quest game. Yeah, on the quest list, list, but it's totally skippable. But it's, but it's totally skippable. I find major, major issues with that. Because that is not only just being wildly inconsistent with how you want to do things, it's honestly just going half-assed. I, I know, I know that sounds well. super blunt, but that saying, yeah, we want to do these 99 ret quests, but we don't want people to have to do them. Yeah. That, I, I hate it. I hate that idea. If you're gonna make it a quest and put it on the quest list, just bite the bullet, go full hog, and say, yes, you are gonna have to do this if you want your quest tape. Like Ron Swanson said, never half-ass two things. Exactly. Whole-ass one thing. Whole-ass one thing. <laughs> Whole-ass this concept, make it good, find out what will engage the most players. Now, Osborne's uh, two arguments that I heard him tell me on it not being a mini-quest is that, one, mini-quests do not get as much attention. Okay, I so don't, make a mini-quest list. I, then make, the, then make them here's, Yeah, here's the thing. You have two options. One, actually work on the quest list and make mini quest section on there and stop putting that project off because we all know that it needs it. Old or, it. or mini quest guess what? Attention. We have a really, really good achievement system now. Stu did really good work on that. Make Pretty a very so make a very visible mini quest section on there. And just throw them all on there because guess what? No, make a there visible are, quest there section are, on there. There are plenty of mini quests that exist in the game that I never would have known about without going to the wiki. Like uh, General Sword. Does anyone fucking know about that without looking that up? 
No. Not unless you have the, not unless you have the Slisky Shadow Perk at this point. And yeah, exactly. I, I was the I was the type who ran around with the Ring of Visibility. Of course you were. Of course you were. <laughs> but there were plenty of mini quests that exist that are just completely unfindable. That's yeah, not the fault of it being bad or not up to being a quest. It's the fact that you've hit them so horribly. Yeah. Like I'm totally fine with things being hidden. But, but like, if you don't want let them us to well, know that yeah, they let us know exist. that they exist. Or, or if you don't want us to know they exist, make them findable. Yeah, like simple as that. Yeah. Easter eggs are one thing, but like, you know, put stuff in the game that players are able to experience without needing to consult an outside source. Right. Yeah. So okay, yeah, um, I, I think we got through all that. One. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's our big rant on. But we're cat. not done with the quest fest yet. All right, next up is a hard place. <laughs> That's the one you went with. It was one that popped into my mind I, right I, now. I put it on the list as Tale of Omens. I mean, um, I, I also had. I mean, a, a, me a, like a, a hard a hard place would have to be the sequel between. Between a rock, so that, that's exactly why I yeah, put it on. Yeah, that's why. That's why I. Um, I also, I also picked. Should I stay or should I Virago? I thought there were, there should be a reward of Virago go boots. <laughs> uh, Wake me up before I Virago go. <laughs> Jeez. But anyway, the Virago Diaries. So, <sighs> um, it's a quest about Virago's origins. It takes place post end game. Ooh, problem there is requiring endgame. I do don't it. have a problem requiring no, endgame. I don't, do I don't know what that's y'all are just, talking about. That's where you just do it. And once again, like if you're worried that PVMers won't be able to access it, remember, PVMers like their cop cape. They do. They will have the quest cape. <laughs> that is very true. And the people that you are you're writing a lore heavy quest. You, why do you want to bait the people in? They're going to skip over the quest. Cause got to get that, got to get that PVM bait in there. Like but, yeah. I don't agree with the notion that Virago has to be in the name just to shoehorn the PVM community into the quest. Like, come on, right? Come Agreed. on. Let's but, Virago um, to them all. So, so the motivation for the, the oh, quest God. is that after Endgame, <laughs> where Virago was brought down to more of a, a mortal status for a moment, there he realized he doesn't know how he began. Um, he, he was he was very robotic before, but now he is less he's more he's more aware. Here's the thing. I don't quite understand this in a logical sense of all the other gods like undivinity effect thing kinda of went away the moment they left the maze. Why is he special? He remembers being undivine. He's well, gone back. Yeah. It's 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 the experience of that's changed him, not it just him. it just feels very inconsistent with how they, everyone they else. They literally have in the dialogue. He's just been questioning his origin, his purpose, why he's a thing. He 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 cares about who he is, and is wondering really what his purpose is. And I think that's a perfectly valid reason to do a quest. Right. So so skipping the comedic start to this quest, because which is it, actually funny, I will add. It's funny. Wait, and, writing there. You know what? Um, I was I was worried about the tone, and now, now that we've been assured, the rest of it is like relatively serious. I'm I'm less. Not only have we been assured, but the mechanics of the quest lend itself to change abruptly because the quest is yeah. a purely a third person, a, a first person look at whoever the defeater is. Like you are yeah. playing as that character. You're not playing as yourself. You 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 put on the outfit of omens and you jump into yeah. the pool at the bottom of Virago's pit, and then you are that character for the. Basically, the whole quest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm great with that. Yeah. In the past, uh, we've been told death is in it, so that's one character, but there's yeah. others. And then you do the whole quest like that, which seems yeah. pretty cool. But uh, shout out to Osborne for managing to write some comedy sequences that don't rely on references to be funny. But I was funny. actually kind of very upset when I first saw this because I was like, oh my god, they're turning a Virago quest into comedy. But he clarified that that was like the opening bit and that you're not. And it was just some right, things with, with some scopulus. So with the way the plot progresses, high scopula, I am very. They they have been getting real dank. <laughs> That's what I thought first too. <laughs> I see it's meant like higher ranked, but yeah, the, with the way the quest goes, it lends itself to change tone very from one thing to another abruptly. So it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm overall pretty pleased with uh, how this layout looks. Good job. I'm eager for it. That one's cool. 
I'm not okay. wanting a Virago backstory request, just like I want an Araxor backstory request. So nice. And then the final one. And then the big one. I think the one of even slightly more contention than Virago. Maybe for you. Uh. Jungle treasure. It's not jungle yes, treasure. Ancient, ancient treasure. That's it's not. Name. It's not jungle treasure. It's not it's ancient. Tre treasure. Ancient treasure is what he's just calling it to get people to shut up and stop calling it jungle treasure. Yeah, it's it's not either of those. Which names. upsets me because I really wanted jungle treasure. I'm calling it jungle treasure. I, I wanted not. jungle treasure really badly until I read his document and then I went shit. He knows. He knows what I really want. What do you really want? Tell me what you, you want. put in the damn document. <laughs> what do you really really want? Right. See, my thing is like. I don't think we need another Majorat rehash. No, we don't. We really I didn't don't. I think so either, but he literally hit every topic I really cared about still. So. Like, you if know, we have to go around and find four things in the exact same way as Desert Treasure, do not make it Ice, Blood, Smoke, and Shadow. Or, Please. Or two of, the, two of those, uh, two of the things specifically that you go do are not even, like, no, he, straight Majorat. He, he, he made those those names about the elements are, they were jokes to start off with, but then they actually fit, so he kept them. Um, I just, but yeah, I don't, I don't like the that. notion of having to go through that again. But um, I, I think this was overall spectacularly well done. But, also worth yeah, noting, for the most part. He, he, we didn't get Nabor because Mod Jack has plans for him. That could have been a path, though. Broken minds. But the the pitch of uh, it's so Zerosian based, which makes me like kind of like dry hat dry heave over in the corner over here. But um, <laughs> you're trying to find a Zerosian treasure, um, and then one of the uh, paths isn't even Zerosian. They, we got we got Kamora in there, but it's kind of weird in context. Yeah, but we learned about Kamora and some yeah, additional we, information. We, we got Kamora in there. War, their gods and their but, superstitions. I think it's just funny awesome. because of all the random characters to throw in Kamora yeah. of all people. That's because Hellring. We're, we're even getting some Vaku lore here, which has me pretty hyped. Wait, really? I didn't read yeah. that. Follow a Is that new? Account, follow a historical amount account of Kamora's adventure in Krim. She puts an end to a terrible ritual, which will summon a powerful demon into the body of an innocent. That's a Vaku. Huh. Look at that. I think the demon's but, gonna be Zerosha. I mean, I Who, thought but, wasn't Kamora famous for like killing a dragon? Kamora was just an adventurer. She had many adventures. Okay, I knew she killed a dragon at one point. And but... this is just one account of her adventures. So in in her in the path for her item, you go to the Heroes Guild, pick up a account of her adventure, and then follow through it as she did until you get to the end where the item is. Hmm. I am very interested about the Vaku lore, though. Oh. Yeah, I don't think it'll be huge, but like whoever is I mean, doing it's, the ritual, it's still are a Vaku, so. it's still a reference though. So yeah, so uh, literally a name. one shot word that we got from yeah. Legends Quest. Hey, I, I pitched I pitched those mobs that got beat by fucking camels. So goddamn camels you know. are the only ones I don't like out of that set. Oh, they're so I, I, bad. I, I mean, I didn't like most of them to start with, but at this point, I've grown to like all of them except camels. Like, Isn't that funny? Because because still... camels were the only ones that were made by Raven. <laughs> Like it's it's unfortunate, but they are the worst of the three by such four. a wide margin. It's not or worst of the four by such a wide margin. It's not even fun. Mm -hmm. Wyverns uh, weren't that great until that that recenter patch. Where I would I would actually argue that Wyverns were the best of the four at launch. Okay, I can see that. I mean, they well, got they, much better. Uh, yeah, they did. See, I anyway. would disagree. I would say at launch the best was. Uh, Mammoth? Mammoths, yeah. Mammoths, Mammoths were the stayed... buggiest of the four at launch. They stayed very sane, I think, in my opinion. They they haven't changed. I think a Wyverns lot, got better like, over time, but yeah, I think they, Mammoths they, started out the best. They worked very quickly to course correct on the I don't think, I mean, and the others had to take time. I mean, I don't think anyone's gonna sit here and say that Ripper Demons were the best on launch. So not at launch, but right now I would say they're Rip, the best. Ripper Demons were a thing where it you could not figure it out launch. Like it, yeah. it we required this much time to figure out all the ways not to die there. Yeah. yeah it was but once you know all the ways, it's possible. Um anyway, back anyway, to the Yeah, um part There's, two takes you to the Menophos library to see the conflict between the stern judges. I good. Added uh, it. Finally, I added it. There's, finally there's more Menophos. Like there's some things I like here, but I feel like the uh the actual like doing part here is just look into some mirrors. 
So I'm I'm less excited about that one specifically. I mean, yes, but I think I am just more excited that we'll get something in Menifos that's like oh, not totally not garbage. So. Um, part three is the one that excites me the most. Yes, for you. Uh, the Hereditus expedition and learning about Trindine. Like, woo! Right. Give me give me some quality Trindine and Temical lore, along with more information about the Hereditus expedi uh, expedition, and I will be psyched. Well, this is seriously one of my favorite pieces of Majorat lore that has not been expanded upon very much yet, and I cannot wait to see more. I'm glad you're excited. And the last bit is the ice mm -hmm. one, and it is, um, you speak to oh, yeah, this one's fine. and he directs you to Gorok, and you do stuff there. You do stuff with Abergol and Palkira, and apparently he's somehow related to Palkira in some way. Cool. So great, moving on. Uh, a big part of this is, like, the combat difficulty, which was something that carried over from the first one, and they mark... He marked the God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses as the difficulty of the quest bosses, which I'm okay with. I think that might be, like, the toughest we've gotten, if it is. But like, considering the quest recs for this, cool. Oh, yeah, quest recs are huge. Majorat Memory, Children of Mon, Jack of Spades. Yeah. And Ritual of the Majorat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah those are duplicate. Yeah. Those are, those are, those, those are already folded in there, yeah. Um, um, and then he's teasing us with that. The, uh, the end is... Uh, you in, uh, interrogate one of the assassins sent after you, and you find out who they were sent by. Claire gets angry, and the conclusion is not the jungle, not the desert. Nya, 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 nya. There's nya, obviously nya, the nya, plot nya. here, and Raven is not going to share. And the, there's only one reward, and it is tiny insert maj right here. Um, that is it. That's it. Tiny and broken. Just, that's good. just a, a no. tiny tentacle, and that's it. Reward's not a thing. It's not design. It's not important. But it'll be big. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, so that's I, it. From, I really love this one. This that's it from Quest. Really I'll, I'm excited. I, I'd be okay if a team picked this up. I would be hyped if a team picked this up. I would be okay, hyped uh, if a team picked this up over keep, like keep Wildcats. Okay, cooking I'm guilds, really excited yeah. for this one. Cooking, cooking guild. guild revamp and cooking capers. Oh, the, yes. the, the, the standard, the structure that uh, standardized and made here is amazing. Like the mini quest ideas. Yeah. I, I'm calling them capers because that's what the, the cap guild yeah, did. Keep, okay, yeah. Making capers a standard thing is They're amazing. They're cookers. Yeah. Oh, God. Boy, that was funny. Good, good point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's four capers. I, I well. did say it with really poor emphasis. So. 30, 70, and 99. Yeah. And... Uh, can we call them, like, Ramses, maybe? Oh, yep. Nope. It's got to be Ramses. <laughs> okay. And each uh, one yeah. new ability in the guild. And most of them are machines, which I thought was an interesting term. Granted, there's no invention plug-in to this design, yeah. but I would really like to see it that once you unlock the ability to use the machine, you can then build more of them in the guild. He, he seemed interested in that. I seem to recall him responding. That, that way you can like up your production of dough balls or whatever, or brewing or something. Yay, like this would be a nice little unlock for those. You just yeah, have, no, you just um, have an NPC in there that's screaming, your machines are fucking trash! <laughs> just You're automatically not... put it in there in before players. <laughs> But no, um, this this is super cool. I love seeing guild improvements, and this looks like a really great way to do it. Structure, and that's not just the guild thing. It's also adding uh, cooking distractions to just yeah. cooking around the world, and you get handed contracts while you're cooking. Like, it once again is a really awesome, like, diversification for a skill. Right. Yep. Oh, I love it. So, a uh, huge fan of this one. Yep. Uh, hey, next up Timbo. is uh, Alchem uh, Alchemical Onyx Jewelry. Yes. So this is kind of a follow-up from the stuff that was the fallout with 40 AA, right? No. What are you talking no. about? The alchemical onyx no. stuff that they're doing. Luck of the dwarves. This, this yeah, is more luck of the dwarves stuff. 40 AA. What are you talking about? I don't know. Something came up with alchemical stuff after 40 AA he, went he down. Briefly no. mentioned that, like, I don't know what you're talking. I don't, I don't really know what he so means. After clue okay, rework, move on. Ignore clues. me, doing, ignore me, and keep going. After the clue rework, everyone's <laughs> doing clues, and items that provide fortunate components have basically crashed. Don't so, the they want more items to make those items go back up. It's like 500k, where they're like at 100 right now. Um, yeah. There's three ideas here, but two of them have been received much better, and they're probably going to pursue just the two. Yeah. We've got Grace of the Elves, a stealing amulet. One of the ones they want to do. Um, this one gives you the main effect is really teleports. You can use all of the skilling portal teleports from the max skill with this item. Um, I, I think it's just the two you've selected. No, you you redirect it. Yours. You you when you get the item, you direct it. The first direct you 
if you don't have access to the Max Guild Garden, you direct it once and you cannot redirect it. But otherwise, you okay. can redirect it whenever you want to wherever you want. Ah, okay, I see. Because it says you cannot redirect the portals using the amulet. So I assumed, yeah, it says allows you to use the Max Garden portal teleports from anywhere. So whatever you've set your Max Garden teleports as is what this teleports. Okay. Okay, you're right. Which is still awesome. Yeah, you sound what you want. Yeah. Um, and this Nexus also uh, increases, um, well, no, decreases prayer drain with Saren scaling prayers. Such as light form, super heat, uh, form, Chronicle it's yep. halved. Unfortunately, dark form is not affected by this, which is a real shame because dark form drains way too much prayer to be useful. Well, it's because it wants to be a scaling necklace, not combat. I know. Um, um, and then finally, when you are scaling, you have a chance to have something spawn nearby that gives you a random item from the rear drop table. Including Hazelmere Signet Ring. Yeah. That because cool. this this would be this would be treated as a um, as a luck of the dwarves for stillers, basically. Mm -hmm. But um. And then he says he also wants one powerful or two other good effects on here. Yeah, we'll see. I love this. So that one's probably going to get made. Yeah. yeah. That one got well received. I mean, I can here, see this being done in tap fairly easily. So The second one here so. was not as well received, and they're probably just going to strip it, the effects and yeah. give it to other things. His problem was just that it didn't have a killer feature. Right. Like, it was a, a couple small things that were kind of nice, but, like, there wasn't anything that's like, oh, I have to have this. Right. Because um, currently it has unlimited teleports to the Invention Guild, um, up to 500 charges of Signs of the Porter on the necklace, mm -hmm. and a disassembling speed increase of 50% more. So the big thing, thing here is probably Honestly, the Porter thing, which is the thing they'll probably yeah. strip out and give to something else. Which is interesting, because the disassembly speed one is actually the one I was most excited about. I like that one, but most at this point... My, my problem with the Porter on a necklace slot is that we already have the... Uh, the necklace from Endgame that I would want to be wearing while doing anything I would get a porter from. So I wouldn't really care about this as a as a. Um, but then there's choice. Style. But like. again, but then there's choice. I agree. I like choice. Um, but then the problem is, then why would I not just wear my porter in my pocket slot? Because then you don't get to have five hundred of them in one slot. You could have many of these necklaces going. Yeah, but they send them directly to the bank, so I can literally fill my inventory with them anyway. I suppose. Anyway, this one's not getting made. So, goodbye, ingenuity of the humans. And hello, name pending easy teleporter. <laughs> this one, this one is name pending. It's not going to be called easy teleporter. But it is uh, I basically passage of the abyss is the popular one right now. I could see that, but this one is essentially just a trillion times better teleportation compactor. Basically, you take every single teleport item and charge, add a bajillion charges to it. Right. This thing, when fully charged, has 5,000 charges of teleport. Yeah. Jesus. And it can store 6 out of 12 possible jewelry teleports, so you'd want 2 of these, each with 6. It's so good. And then you recharge it with just more fortunate components, but at a ridiculous rate. It's like one fortunate component, like 100. One is 1,000 charges. 1,000, okay. So, yeah, you don't need much once you have one of these, but you need the full, like, 50 fortune bones. It's get so good. So yeah, you have two of these, you have all of the jewelry teleports in two slots. And so many of them. I I want these. For this item. And this and the and the main use for this is to do clues. So it just feeds back into itself, which is the great thing about Luck of the Dwarves is it's not really a valuable item. I love that about it. Like this one, it just feeds back into itself. It's not really valuable unless you're just making more of them. Yeah. So I like that. All right, well, mm -hmm. on to Shawnee's clan improvements. Fang? Fang is, like, jumping up and down in the corner right now. All right, basically, Shawnee just sat down and did all of the permission things that every clan owner has been begging for. Uh, we can change the way broadcasts are done. Uh, you can toggle guest-seeing broadcasts. You can individually mute clan members. Um, mutes are broadcasted to Admin Plus or everybody. Um, it shows you who did the muting, who it's on. It can be undone at any given time, and it lasts until you undo it. Um, Avatar Warden can now be given to anybody. No need for them to be an admin. You can see the number of people in your clan and your clan chat. Um, leaving clan, make sure that there's like special options. 
The Citadel has been in, uh, improved and urns work in there. Plots, except for smithing and cooking, now give 20% more XP. Um, uh, and, and he's got other things that he would like to slip in there as well. But, like, wow! Oh, my God! I'm so grateful. There is just so many improvements to clan adminship that I and Walter as clan owners appreciate so much. Awesome stuff moving on. Yep. Uh, Pie and Harrison's combat improvements. So this, this one had lofty goals to start with, but I think they only got to doing the bounty hunter stuff. Yep. Yeah. Great. Kill bounty Good. hunter. Get rid of it. Oh, there's, there's, but there, there's, rewards. They awesome. put them in tons of places. They did them. Um, uh, what do we got here? Skipping the, the Slayer Master for a quick second. You have the, the rune pouches, which are now gotten via uh, Abyss rune crafting. Yep. Love it. Which is great. You have... Um, I missed uh, the, the hilt, the adrenaline crystal, preserved meat, yep. upgrade patch for friendly stuff, rev yep. up enhancer, ancient warriors, equipment patch, blood weed seeds, and brawling grubs are all from wilderness slayer contracts. Right. You got tier 80. Rose pickpocketing and the muddy key. Okay. You got the tier 87 weapons, which are going on uh, new bosses found in the, the uh, bandit camp. Yep, they're basically turning those guys into, into bosses. Yep. And you get the game of the Forsaken from Barrows. And yep, um, I do that, not like the amulet of um, I, I don't like the amulet of Forsaken as like a super rare from Barrows just naturally. I think it should be an unlock from doing Kindred Spirits. What does the amulet of Forsaken even do? Uh, it improves your Barrows set effect. Oh right. Um, originally he had it had it on here as being a wilderness drop, but enough people were like, "Yo, nah," that he changed it. So thank you. You really want to put these back on other PvP things? No. On other willy things. Um, no, we don't need other um, PvP things. They've but... redistributed the Revenant pet and instead just make it um, as a drop from Revenants. Great. That makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, nice. But there's the big one here that we should probably talk about is the Slayer Master. Uh, oh, quick quick note as well. Um, Bounty Hunter Teleport obviously is removing, being removed and refunding points to Deathmatch, which is staying in. And the Ogre Flask is turning into a six-dose fl uh, six flask that you can create using 10 robust glass instead. Woo! Make cool. it yourself. So, yeah, nice. Make the, make All right, anyway, moving back to the Slayer Master. Slayer Master. So, the, 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 person, shoehorn, the person that she wanted, uh, pigeonholed for this is Vigora. And it works. I, I think it actually really works. The, yeah. The comments I was seeing was that Vigora wouldn't be someone that was in the Order of Slayers. No, but he's just a ghost who's like, go kill shit. They're like in my the castle. Way was, the way Pi was like trying to swing it, like after that was brought up, mm -hmm. was what if Figora is trying to start his own order of slayers for Zamorak? Uh, Honestly, I don't know I, if I would like that. I kind of just want him that, to be annoyed but, that things are in his castle. Yeah, I, I would much prefer it's just like, yo, so I'm a ghost, and I know this doesn't really matter, but why are all these monsters in my castle? You're not killing Maybe just. What? Go kill you're, things. You're not killing things in his castle. I know, but he wants revenge on that race as a whole. He wants... On what race? Any race in his fucking castle. I, he, <laughs> wants, he, he wants vengeance for the wilderness. Yeah, I know. But, I, um, I think he's a perfectly great choice as a Slayer Master, even if he's not somebody in the Order. And I think it's it's just kind of a, a perfectly fine way to go. I don't like the idea of him starting a new Order for Zamorak. I don't feel like the Order would have been that widespread at the time. But uh, I, I think he's a good choice for this. So it's a thing. I probably will never use it ever. Um, but he I also assigned, he assigns regular tasks that are in the wilderness and revenants. And his special task is to kill all the bosses in the wilderness without banking. Fun. Hey, wow, great. Which is uh, funny because they're adding that and it's going to require going the, the bosses that, re those guys. that require your skull. Otherwise, you're definitely dying. Yeah. Great. Uh, it's it's funny. It's interesting. Um, but I, I like it. I think it's a cool choice. I don't really think people are going to use it super often. No, uh, I don't think people use it really often. For those that can survive in the wilderness, though, it's a great benefit. For those who want to go to the wilderness, it's a great benefit. So I, I see no problems with this. Good job. So that is the bounty hunter stuffs. Right. So should um, we move on to, to Mark's? Things, which I don't really have a grasp yeah. of what this is. I don't either. I, I tried to read through it, and it just felt like See, a bunch of, like, hey, here's some community Well, things. this is the thing that, like, I've heard the absolute least about. 
Yeah, like, I haven't got, heard he's anyone got talking so about this. so much stuff pinned, but just, it, it's weird. Like, he had this, like, costume conga line thing. I did. He had, like, a shop stock, like, thing. I was just very confused by this one overall. He can do these things if he wants. I, I like, don't understand, so I don't know what I, to talk about. I didn't follow these ones very closely because it wasn't something that personally interested me. And as a result, I just feel more confused reading over it than I do, like, <laughs> interested. That's funny. So moving on. But moving on to Mohawk stuff, she did quality of life stuff. There's a lot of it I cannot go into. Oh, yeah. Boy. Uh, there's, yeah, quality of life is all cool. It's not like you got, like, a centralized theme. It's yeah. everything everywhere. So much stuff. Um, and so uh, I'm really that. happy about everything that I've seen. Um, my personal favorite is that Dungeoneering tokens from Melier Pickpocketing are uh, auto-redeemed. Oh, that's great. I love you. I'll Thank so you. Much space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's great. Um, moving on to Krista's skill guide rework. She's been working on just, just tech stuff in the skill guide, making sure it provides more information, um, like on secondary requirements and um, where to access and stuff like that, um, which I think is something that's nice, consistency, cleanup, really good stuff like that. Um, anything else you guys to say about that? Uh, nope. Not really, no. But yeah, and then she also had a lot of text to it. Like she gave some examples of, let's say you unlock the Argonite hatchet in Dungeoneer. It says, you would get a pop-up that says, this tier seven hatchet is for use in Demonheim only, can be stored in your DJ. Dungeoneering tool belt, can be made from one Argonite bar from level 62 smithing, can also be gained as a drop from the bulwark beast. So that would pop up on the Argonite hatchet in like the woodcutting section. So awesome. A lot of information, which I think is great. Very useful. So you don't have to go to the wiki. I, like the wiki is great. But the fact that we as a game is dependent on an outside source as community run yeah. is a little shaky. I agree. Especially because there are a lot of portions of the wiki that are weak. And sure, like, you can ask players to, to update them. But, but some not of the information is the time to do it. it. This but, information, some of the there, There's be been a huge push by people. Yeah, there's been a huge push by people to put a lot of lore stuff on the wiki recently. But, oh, boy, is the quality weak. The, the problem is 16 years of a game... Yeah. Every week you have an update. You assume people read the news post and know what's going on with the news. Yeah. And then, like, five years later, no one knows what happened in the news that yeah. day. Plus, so plus there's also a lot of stuff that gets missed. Yeah. Kirkby Blocks literally just noticed a typo that's been sitting on a page for two years. And it's like a titled typo, too, like a header. Wow. It was really funny. I laughed. But, yeah, great stuff with the skill guide rework. It's, it's very appreciated even if, well, it might not be widely appreciated, but... It's noticed by me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm also really glad that it's something that was picked up as Game Jam because um, it, it was mentioned on the poll as being a large update. So it's great that Crystal was like, well, I mean, I can I can hit some of this now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The next channel has a hilarious name. Um, Kelpie the Rockering. to the Rockering. Um, this is so funny. I'd like to put in my name for the quest as, uh, since this is a sequel to Guard of Tranquility for mid-level construction, I put in City of Commerce, because it's actually mostly about like building shops and stuff like that, where the rewards are the shops you build and buildings. Mm. Um, so I, City I kind of, of Tranquility? That didn't like the seas. Ha, no way. See, there, there's not really a good name for it with construction. Oh, I know, I agree. So City of Commerce was my pitch. For that's, a name. That's not bad. But it's basically about like just going into the, the broken down parts of Varrock. Well, for, first of all, you have a whole pitch for this. You have to win a contract to rebuild Varrock by putting together a crack team of constructioners. Yeah, those are for that. Uh, from around the world. And then you get them together, you win the contract, and they have to revamp all these like dilapidated ruins in Varrock to be like shops and buildings that are useful. At the end of the quest, you have all these shops and buildings that are useful in Varrock you can use now, which I think is. A great, the reward fits perfectly. Kudos for that. But um, the the one I saw mostly that um I liked a lot was one of the things you build is the construction guild. So it kind of feeds into it. It's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean it's kind of cool, but it's like, do we need a construction guild? You need a place to do construction, not in your POH destroying shit. But okay, we don't fair. do. But we don't really do construction outside of the POH anyway. 
Well, yeah, but he'd like to change that sort of thing. I mean, oh, I mean, if you want to change it, then be my guest. So, it just so it thought, sounds weird like offhand. He, so, actually, I thought, like, Mod Ryan's skipping to his project, that fit perfectly. Like, yeah, like that was an idea. Like construction for, contracts. Before Mod yeah. Ryan announced his project on stream, it was being talked about in Kelpie's chat as, let's put contracts in there, and you, like, build a bunch of flat pack stuff. And my, then, Mod Ryan's like, surprise, motherfucker. That's I mean, it's his perfect. is even better. It's not flat pack. It's you go into a little instance yeah. of a house and you build things. But it's what great. if from this field, you just like got sent contracts to do things and you go build them in these houses and then yeah. you get some planks to compensate what you used and you go to another one. So I think that'd be like a great place to put it as a reward for the quiet. Yeah. Um, uh, it was interesting to me that in some of the discussion, Kelpie seemed confused as to requiring a Varrock graphical update. When <laughs> the poll was literally like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the poll like dependent that. on so a graphical I update. But um, I, I would love this to come with a graphical update, but if it I doesn't, I'm, I'm not even that worried about it either. Me neither. I mean, they're updating ruins, not updating, like, a building next to a building. Like, an old building next to a new building. But, um, yeah, and, and it's, it's aimed for somewhere between level 30 and 70 construction wherever it starts to get boring. Whatever, whatever yeah. point you, you are constantly just removing and building, removing and building, removing and building. Yep. Yeah. Which I, thought I mean, but that's, that's always been a problem with construction, though. So. Well, at the beginning of it, you like build one thing. It's like, oh, you just got level two, and I can build another thing. You build that. Oh, you just got level oh, three. Oh, I mean, I completely, eventually that I completely agree. Down. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, uh, how many tea dining tables do I have to make? Yeah. Ah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I really like I, this. was, again, my favorite pitch for quests on the last poll. Um, and I think it's still decent now. I think Virago Quest probably overtook it now seeing the pitch for it. Yeah. Um, but it's still very nice. But yeah, um, but yeah, I, I did this one. I want it to be made. Please do this. Next. Uh, next is uh, construction contracts, I believe. You're skipping uh, yeah, the skipping dungeons? Yep, sorry. Uh, oh, I got yeah. to do them mixed up. I also mixed yeah, up. Yeah, uh, skilling dungeons. I was really confused by this one at first, and then I looked into it, and now I'm like all on board with this. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is really cool. Basically, um, you, similarly to finding Uncharted Isle maps, you uh, occasionally, while skilling, will find a, like a note as to where to find a special, randomly generated, timed skilling resource dungeon. Mm -hmm. Um, where you can go in and you can get access to special skilling nodes. Now, right. are we... Is it, like, actually a resource dungeon? Like it is a collapsing resource dungeon, resource dungeon similar to right. single. Okay. And you can choose whether you get extra resources or extra XP. So you either get lots of XP yep. and no resource, or lots of resources and no XP. It's awesome. Yeah, and you can bring friends in there, too, or they're working yep. on that. And they can mine with you. Your time inside does not change, so it's really just an advantage to bring your friends at that point. Well, you're going to share the wealth. It's not like you're getting yeah. extra wealth for bringing them. It's just being nice. I mean, but they're, they're getting wealth. Like, right, and then maybe they'll share with you later. Yeah, That's like, or, it's, it's or they can just come in and get XP, too. It's, really, I just I don't see a single downside for this. I think right. this is super cool. It's, yeah, it's, I, I think it fits nicely into the game's lore. I think it's really cool. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. It feeds into um, get that skilling drop idea. If you get a drop while skilling, it's awesome feeling. And it's like that. Yeah. The other the other thing I liked about this is that um, they discussed and are looking into the possibility of maybe generating some dungeoneering puzzles in here too to make it more than just oh I found a thing to go get free resources. That'd be nice. So I would be I I, I definitely was suggesting that a couple times. Um, I don't really expect <laughs> it to happen, but it would be super cool if it did. Um, or maybe even just like gating some of the the really good resources behind that sort of thing. That'd be cool. Yeah. But uh, that's that's all I got about this one. I just, I like this one. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, POH contracts? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, we touched on this. It was Mod Ryan's thing. It's you enter, you, you're tasked to enter a instance of a house with like three or four rooms, all with hot spots. You have to fill all the hot spots in, and then you're done. You get all your XP, you get some planks as a reward, and you move on to the next one. And it's a really cool way to train construction, I think. There were some good jokes about the different uh, things you had to do, too. Mm -hmm. Like, one of them was, like, what was it, um, like, a Gordon Ramsay's house, and it was just a bunch of kitchen rooms? <laughs> yeah. There's, like, different difficulties of it, and 
I, I really like, I, I really think, granted, it's kind of the identity of the skill at this point, but I want to change the identity of the skill because it's a really dumb identity. Okay. Yeah, but I think, I think this one's really cool. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a better direction for the skill. Crazily enough, uh, this year's game jam was almost entirely stuff that I thought was really awesome and I want to see done. Oh, yeah. Like, I think it blew last year's game jam out of the water. Uh, I guess. What do you, what, what do you I mean, I don't really, I don't remember that much from last year's exactly. game jam, but I remember the one with Stu having the 30 hour live stream, so can't beat that. That's not game jam. That's... Was that not a game jam? Or was that no, game was... blast? 30 hour game blast. Okay. Yeah. Well, never mind. I um, feel silly. <laughs> you, as you should. As I should. But definitely from this POH contract thing, we need a hero item. Um, Ladella's hammer. That's all. Yeah, more hero items. Can't okay. complain with that. So. And that implies Ladella's dead, mate. No, they're not from just from dead people. I Probably mean, still alive. I mean, they're supposed to be. I mean, we're getting one from Lady Traherne at some point. I don't think. I that's believe that's unless it's from her husband. Yeah, yeah, it could be from her husband. So. I think yeah. they're all just an incidentally dead at this Quick. point. Quick. What's his name? Do y'all remember? Psych, 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 work. Psych, uh, psych. I work. also do not remember. C-Y. Yeah, I don't it, remember. It started with a C. It did start with a C. Walter, save us. <laughs> Psychorg. It's like cyborg, but cyborg. Uh, uh, it's lady, close to that in some, some fashion. We can't leave to answer this question. It's Cyborg. Wait, was that not wrong? Cynog. Oh, it's Cynog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was so close. I would have gotten that right. Sign up. Close enough. I get the points, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so that is the entirety of the game jam. It's a lot of cool stuff there. So much cool stuff. So, uh, that yeah, that thing. is the end of the topic section. So let's get over with the rest of the show. And that was the rest of the show. Thanks for watching. You, you make this joke like six every, out of every six every out of seven that, podcasts. Yeah. You just have to it's, make it's, that joke. It's, it's not funny for like a couple days, but then by the next week, it's he'll funny. he'll go like two exactly. weeks without doing it, and then this has been the show. Like bye. Yeah, because you know if you give it time to it, it refreshes. You, you I'm going to do it. Give it time to again. cleanse other people's palates. It's just like how we didn't try to pretend Walter said hello this week, but we're going to do it next week, week damn it. <laughs> because this week we were on to Spongebob. Yeah, we were too busy singing Spongebob. All right, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, update uh, of the year. Go ahead, Arnie. Just... It's, uh, it's, still, it's still Pieces of Hate. What are, what are we talking about? It's still Pieces of... No, it's line fire making for me. Thank um, you. No. I still have my vote for to Orses. Sorry. That was so funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, Pieces of Hate is I think it's going to be Pieces of Hate till around June. I, have I, a feeling I don't know if the story raids are going to beat it out. I mean, come on. De depending on what magical stuff comes out in the next few depends months. On, depends see. on how good the Sarah you lore is. Let's, let's yeah, go with that. Depends on, depends on what mystery quest is and how good it is. Depends on how good Needle Skips is. And depends on how good the Elite Dungeons are. On the lore, I'm, I'm, I'm basing on mechanics. Mechanics are great. Everything, yeah. Like it's it's got to be an all around thing. All around. If dungeons have good story and great mechanics. I'm so on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we'll hopeful. see. I'm I'm excited. I I think the future of the game right now is super bright in terms of great updates. Next month is going to be killer because we're getting a quest and a cool ass boss too. Yeah, a quest. That we don't know what it is, and I'm dying. Um, workshop five, please. Please be element workshop five. I won't I'm be disappointed if it's not, but like. Okay. You will. I can you almost will. guarantee you it's not an art quest though, since it's story art boss thing. So, yeah. Could be either. Could be either. I th I'm just gonna go ahead and say you lost the bet. Sorry. I had no stakes in this bet. It was between you and. You also and got me. into the into it. I I, 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 got I, into it, I have I have days have, like... I have days to back me up on this. You were in it. Yes, but I didn't offer like. Didn't you guys like have a money thing going on? No, we just said that you have oh. to get on the podcast and say that you were wrong. Oh yeah, oh that that I'm fine with. But can we follow up that he also had Amanishi Temple interior? He is not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
love the man, the myth, the meme. So I would I would argue that that cancels it out. <laughs> that was such a great prediction. <sighs> it's not even that the prediction was great, it was the phrasing was great. Oh, uh, it, it was sheer confidence. I must have oh, said man, it like man. in the middle of the night or How something. How drunk were you? <laughs> not at all, not for that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh... That is the show. That's the show, folks. Alright, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. This has been the Podcast of Owls episode number 12. I have been Krondus, this has been a Masket, and a Vernick, and Walter in the chat. As always, signing out. Bye!